and welcome from the mission control of Satishan Space Center, the spaceport located in the southern part of India at Sri Harikota. Today, we have the launch of Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, the mission designated as PSLV C-39, and it is the 41st flight of PSLV. The main passenger on board this mission is the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite IRNSS 1H and it is the 8th satellite in the IRNSS series. The 29 hours countdown for the mission started yesterday afternoon and during the countdown phase of operations, liquid propellants were successfully filled up in the second and fourth stage of the rocket. As far as the liftoff for the launch vehicle is concerned, it is at 19 hours Indian Standard Time, which is a delay of one minute from the earlier scheduled time. And this revised liftoff time has been worked out to ensure safe distance of IRNSS 1H from the orbiting space debris once it reaches the orbit. If you may recall, the first navigational satellite IRNSS 1A was launched during July 2013 followed by launches of 1B and 1C during 2014, 1D during 2015, and IRNSS 1E, 1F, and 1G during 2016. So presently we have seven IRNS satellites already up in space. The countdown right now is minus uh, 27 minutes for the launch. As far as the overall liftoff mass of the launcher is concerned, it is at 320 tons. The overall mass of the IRNS satellite is 1425 kg and the orbit for this mission is a sub-geosynchronous transfer orbit with the nearest point of 284 kilometer which is a perigee and the farthest point at 20,650 kilometer which is the apogee. The orbital inclination would be 19.2 degrees for this mission and the PSL vehicle configuration for today's launch is the PSL XL version which is the high-end version of PSLV with extended strap-on motors. With regard to countdown, we are at minus 27 minutes from the launch. Mark, minus 27 minutes and counting. Namaskar, my Satishans Antriksh Kendra se sabhi darshoko ka hardik abhinandan karta hu. Aaj ka ye PSLV launch, jo is udaan ki 41vi udaan hai, Bharatiya Pradeshik Nauvahan Satellite 1H, जिसे इंडियन रीजनल नेविगेशनल सैटेलाइट अथवा नाविक कहा जाता है इसे लॉन्च करने के लिए तैयार होता हुआ अभी आप आपके स्क्रीन पर देख रहे हैं पी एस एल वी सी थर्टी नाइन जो सेकेंड लॉन्च पॉइंट पर लॉन्च के करीब छत्तीस मिनट दूरी पर जहां तक काउंट डाउन का सवाल है काफी सफलतापूर्वक आगे बढ़ता हुआ और इस लॉन्च के लिए 29 घंटों वाला काउंटडाउन कल शुरू किया गया था और काउंटडाउन के दरमियान पी के दूसरे और चौथे शरण में लिक्विड ईंधन भर कर दिया था और अब पी रॉकेट अपने अंतिम चरणों से चेकआउट संचलन से गुजर रहा है आज का ये 1040 425 किलो वजन वाला आई एन एस वन एस सैटेलाइट ठीक सात बजे भारतीय समय अनुसार लॉन्च किया जाएगा for the viewers, we have a short video documentary on India's regional navigation satellite system, IRNSS, and its major areas of application. Here is a documentary on IRNSS. Navig, the navigation with Indian constellation is the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System aimed at providing reliable navigation services. The system has been developed for providing accurate information on the position, velocity and time to the users. It will provide position accuracy better than 20 meters over India. And in the surrounding region, extending to about 1500 kilometers. With Navic in place, our dependence on the foreign navigation systems will be significantly reduced. India has joined an elite club of very few nations 
who have their own satellite-based navigation system. Navik is constellation of seven satellites positioned in the orbits of nearly 36,000 kilometers altitude above the Earth. All satellites in the constellation are of similar specifications. These satellites are located in two types of orbits, namely geostationary Earth orbit and the inclined geosynchronous orbit, thus creating a symphony in space. The first satellite of the series, IRNSS-1A, was launched in July 2013, and the seventh satellite, IRNSS-1G, in April 2016. IRNSS-1H replaces IRNSS-1A, which has developed anomalies in its onboard atomic clocks. While IRNSS-1H joins the constellation for providing navigation services, IRNSS-1A will now be used for messaging services. This satellite weighs around 1,425 kilograms. Like its predecessors, it has two types of payloads, navigation payload and ranging payload. The navigation payload operating in the S and L5 bands is meant for transmitting navigation signals to the users. The ranging payload comprises a CDMA ranging transponder and operates in the C band. IRNSS 1H comes with more flexibility in service and is also compatible with the other satellites in the orbit. The IRNSS satellites continuously emit time-stamped navigation signals, which are received by the ground-based IRNSS receivers. The information is then processed by the receivers to derive their own position, velocity and time. For accurate time-stamping, IRNSS satellites carry rubidium atomic clocks that are far more accurate than normal electronic clocks. The system provides seamless 24 by 7 services under all weather conditions. The Novik has immense use for fishermen going to sea. It helps them to reach the high yielding locations, alerts them about bad weather and international water boundaries. Apart from fishermen, Navik also helps the merchant ships to navigate to their destination in the ocean routes, aids them to search and rescue in disastrous situations. Navik supports numerous applications in the road and railway services. It helps in navigation from point A to point B, tracking of passenger vehicles like trains, buses, taxis, tracking of school vans and traffic management. The position information derived from Nave helps the entrepreneurs and government agencies to manage the resources efficiently using geotagging and geofencing techniques, linking position information from Navik with geoinformatic systems. A host of location-based services are offered to general public, be it locating a restaurant, shop, office, fuel pump, picnic spot, etc. Using multi-constellation, multi-channel and differential navigation signals, the Navic provides more accurate position information, which helps in applications like surveying, port operations, precision agriculture, road and railway alignments, etc. Navic is also useful in efficient telecom operations, power grid operations, disaster management, atmospheric studies, etc. Thus, Navic plays an important role in every aspect of our life. The satellite has been realized with the team effort of ISRO. Space Application Center, Ahmedabad, was responsible for realizing the payloads. All sensor elements were delivered by LEOs, while IISU provided inertial elements. LPSC delivered propellant and propulsion system components. Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, located at Thiruvananthapuram, supplied all the composite elements like antenna, yokes and substrates for solar panels and pyros. 
the ISRO Satellite Center, ISAC, at Bengaluru was responsible for the bus systems. The satellite assembly, integration and the environmental tests were carried out at ISAC. The ISRO Navigation Center, located at Bayalalu, is the heart of the ground segment of the NAVIC. The Navigation Control Center at ISTRAC, Bengaluru, and the Satellite Control Facility at MCF, Hassan, play an important role in continuous monitoring and control of space segment. NAVIC ground segment is operational 24 by 7. It has a number of Indian range and integrity monitoring stations, also called IRIMS, which are geographically spread across the country. The ground segment also has IRNSS CDMA ranging stations, IRNSS network timing centers, ISRO navigation centers, and spacecraft control facilities with sufficient redundancies. All of these are interconnected through a robust data communication network. Coming back to IRNSS 1H, after many stringent tests, the satellite is now integrated with the satellite launch vehicle PSLV C39 at Indian Spaceport SDSC Shah. After launch, it will be placed in a geosynchronous orbit with 29 degree inclination at 55 degree east longitude. IRNSS 1H has a mission life of around 10 years. The indigenous Nave provides independent and reliable navigation and timing services in and around our country, making us self-reliant in the field of satellite-based navigation. Mark minus 17 minutes and counting. Control CSC with 539 completed. Roger. This is Vehicle Director, Mission Director. All vehicle parameters are healthy. Vehicle is ready for PSLV C39. And so, welcome back to the live events from the Mission Control Center. Mission Director, Roger. We are at uh, less than 17 minutes. To be very precise, minus 16 minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, we just heard the announcement of a vehicle director giving uh, authorization to the mission director. So from uh, minus 16 minutes onwards, for the next one minute, you will have the authorization being given by the various mission executives, spacecraft director, range director, and uh, telemetry tracking and command network director. So we just heard the announcement for the vehicle director at minus 17 minutes. So at minus 16 minutes now. Mark minus 16 minutes and counting. Timing to control, timing in external hold mark. Yes, minus 16 Roger. minutes. Satellite director to mission director. IRNAS one night spacecraft is configured and green for launch. Mission yes. director, Roger. Spacecraft director Range just authorized director the mission director. Range activities are ready for, for, the, for the launch activities. IRNSS 1H mission. Mission director, Roger. TC director to mission so director. range director authorization uh, TTC is TTC network is ready for real-time support of PSLVC 39 IRNSS 1H mission. Mission director, Roger. So TTC director has just authorized the mission director to go ahead with the next phase of activities. So we are at minus 15 minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, 15 seconds to go before we have the authorization by the mission director, Mr. Hutton, who will give the authorization to proceed with the next phase of launch Mark activities. minus 15 minutes and counting. This is mission director. Based on the readiness of PSL VC-39 vehicle systems, IRNSS 1H spacecraft, range and TTC network systems, and based on the clearance from Mission Readiness Review Committee and the Launch Authorization Board, I hereby authorize to initiate the launch operation sequence for PSLV C-39 IRNSS 1H mission at 1900 hours IST. Today, that is 31st August 2017. 
So we just heard the announcement by the mission director at minus 15 minutes authorizing the launch. So next important event will be the initiation of the automatic launch sequence which will happen at minus 14 seconds. So we are at minus 14 minutes, 13 seconds for the launch. So minus, uh, 14, minus minutes, 14 minutes, and automatic counting. launch sequence has vehicle been initiated. Vehicle director to ALS console. Vehicle director authorizes for initiating automatic launch sequence for PSLV C-39 IRNSS 1H mission. ALC Rojo. So vehicle director has just authorized the initiation of the automatic launch sequence and it will be exactly at minus 12 minutes the automatic launch sequence will get engaged. Now we will bring to you a short video capsule of the vehicle integration activities which will depict the integration of the PSLV C-39 and the IRNSS-1 satellite to the vehicle. Launcher integration activities. So this is the flagging off of the first segment of the S-139 which is the core booster for the PSLV C-39. As you are aware the core booster is a solid booster S-139 which consists of five segments. So what you are seeing is now the assembly of the core bray shroud X segment, the CBS, followed by the integration of the various other segments. So once we have the assembly of the all five segments, the first stage will be ready. So we are at minus 12 minutes, uh, 43 seconds for the launch. So first stage assembly is in progress. The last head end segment and first stage is ready now, S139. And to this now we will have the assembly of the six solid strap-on boosters. And uh, the propellant loading of each of the strap-on boosters is 12 tons. This is the strap-on booster being moved from the facility in Shar to the launch pad, the second launch pad. So integration of the solid strap-on booster which is the Mark booster. minus 12 minutes and counting. Automatic launch sequence for PSLV C-39 IRNSS 1H mission is initiated. We just heard the announcement minus uh, 12 minutes ALS has been engaged and the vehicle is going through the checkout of the various operations. This is the second stage of PSLV, which is uh, the PS2 stage with uh, 40 tons of propellant loading uh, be being integrated on the, over the first stage at the second launch pad. So now the first and second stages of the vehicle are fully assembled. This is the third stage, which is a solid stage called S7, which has a propellant loading of around 7 tons. And what is being lowered now is the fourth stage, which is a liquid stage. So it's a Third and fourth stage called as PS3 and PS4 is an integrated module and this integrated module from the preparation facility is being moved to the launch pad and as a single module it will be mated to the second stage of the launcher. So once this assembly is completed the, sat the launch vehicle is ready to receive the satellite as all the four stages of the rocket has been integrated. This is a view of the INSS 1H in the satellite preparation facility at the launch base and uh, the spacecraft going through the fueling operations and after the fueling operation it gets integrated on the payload adapter and then it will be containerized and then moved to the launch pad. And this is the view of the INS 1H to the four stage of the rocket and the close out of the payload fairing. So payload fairing which is in two halves gets assembled at the launch pad and once the vehicle is fully assembled and checked out the vehicle gets moved from the vehicle assembly building on a mobile launch pedestal as a view of the PSLU XL vehicle moving on the mobile launch pedestal and being brought to the umbilical tower which is the launch pad. Mark minus 10 minutes and counting. So PSLU C-39 at the umbilical tower. So countdown is at uh, minus uh, 9 minutes 50 seconds. It's a view of the mission control center. Chairman Isro, Shri Kirakumarji, Mr. Kuni Krishnan, who is the director of the Sajidhan Space Center. So we have the mission control center here. 
so all the executives closely monitoring the the process of uh, automatic launch sequence when the vehicle parameters are getting checked out so we are as minus uh, 9 minutes 20 seconds for the launch and jahan tak mausam ka sawal hai kal aur aaj subah se kafi saaf vatavaran dikhai de raha tha aur launch ke liye ke samay se hum bilkul anukul so minus 9 minutes आप एक नगर आज के पीएसएल एक्सएल लॉन्च पर पीएसएल वी एक्सएल लॉन्चर ये चार चरणों वाला रॉकेट नंबर फाइव सिक्स थ्री डाटा लगा स्टेशन और लॉन्च के समय 320 टन वजन वाला रॉकेट है इसका पहला चरण जो सॉलिड ईंधन का है उससे सॉलिड कोर बूस्टर एस वन स्टेज कहा जाता है और ये लगभग एक टन का ईंधन ले जाता है और इसकी ऊंचाई करीब 20 मीटर की इस सॉलिड कोर बूस्टर के चारों ओर छह सॉलिड सॉपन बोटर जो अपने में 12 टन का सॉलिड ईंधन ले जाते हैं उसे जोड़ा जाता है सभी ऑफ द मिशन कंट्रोल सेंटर और पीएसएल का दूसरा चरण जैसे पीएसओ पीएस टू स्टेज कहा जाता है वहां करीब 42 टन का लिक्विड ईंधन अपने स्टेज में कैरी करता है और इसकी लंबाई लगभग बारह मीटर की है और पीएसएलवी के तीसरे चरण को जिसे पीएस थ्री स्टेज कहा जाता है और वो अपने में सेवन टन का सॉलिड ईंधन ले जाता है इसी तरह चौथे चरण जो पीएस फोर स्टेज कहलाता है ईंधन वाला स्टेज है अब हम लॉन्च के बिल्कुल करीब सात मिनट चालीस सेकंड की दूरी पर व्यू ऑफ दी पी एस एल वी सी थर्टी नाइन फ्रॉम द सेकेंड लॉन्च पैड अभी आपने कुछ ही समय बने सुना कि लॉन्च से करीब 15 मिनट की दूरी पर जबकि मिशन डायरेक्टर ने लॉन्च ऑथराइज किया था उसके बाद 14 मिनट पर ऑटोमेटिक लॉन्च सीक्वेंस को ऑथराइज कर दिया था और लगभग 12 मिनट लॉन्च के पहले ऑटोमेटिक लॉन्च सीक्वेंस इनिशियट हो गया है एंड इस लॉन्च को ऑथोराइज करने के बीच करने वाली जो बॉडी है वो लॉन्च ऑथराइजेशन बोर्ड ये तैयारियों की तकनीकी समीक्षा के बाद पीएसएलवी सी थर्टी नाइन मिशन को दो दिन पहले ऑथराइज कर दिया था जिसके दरमियान ये 29 घंटों वाला काउंटडाउन कल दोपहर को शुरू हो गया था अब हम काउंटडाउन से काफी नजदीक 6 मिनट 45 सेकंड की दूरी पर सो माइनस सिक्स मिनट फोर्टी सेकेंड फॉर द काउंटडाउन and if i look at the automatic launch sequence the vehicle parameters being checked out uh, you see a lot of greens there the various health parameters of the launcher and the satellite being checked out sequentially in fact there are uh, several hundreds of parameters which gets checked out through the onboard computer that resides in the uh, launch vehicle so uh, today's weather here at the launch site has been very clear and favorable for the launch uh, as you are aware for every launch weather plays a very important role especially during the time of lift off and uh, while the launch vehicle travels through that atmosphere which is during the initial uh, 70 to 80 seconds of flight after lift off and it corresponds to an altitude on 25 to 30 km so by weather what we really mean is the wind condition which exists on the ground and in the upper atmosphere and as this wind conditions change during the time flight of the day and the month due to seasonal variations accurate measurement of wind speed and direction becomes very important for every launch activity so at the launch base a very close monitoring of the wind and weather condition has been carried out during the launch campaign and this activities in fact took the intense operations as we approached on the launch day so the countdown is at minus uh, 5 minutes uh, 12 seconds we uh, have the completed. mission control center for you So as I was mentioning you about the the weather conditions uh, for taking the wind measurements Mark, there were 5 minutes and counting four balloons that were released to take a measurement of the upper part of the wind reception of radar's data in fact the first balloon was released at 2 hours 45 minutes second balloon at 2 hours 20 minutes and the last balloon was released at 1 hour 40 minutes and the reason for doing this target releasing of balloon is to allow them to reach the respective altitudes 
finally the winds measured by this balloon over a various altitude gets combined and synthesized to form a single wind profile from 0 to 21 kilometers so minus 4 minutes 25 seconds for the launch So based on the winds that were measured, a steering program was generated and it's, it has been loaded in the onboard flight system at launch minus 45 minutes. A view of the Mission Control Center. Chairman Isro, Shri Kiran Kumar. Mark minus 4 minutes and counting. Minus 4 minutes for the launch now. So at T0, we will have the ignition of the solid core stage. Along with that, there will be ignition of the four solid strap on boosters as well, which will get ignited on the ground. And uh, this will be followed by the ignition of the remaining two strap on boosters at 25 seconds into the flight. So at minus. Uh, Onboard computers in flight mode. Minus three minutes, 25 seconds. And uh, if you just go through the flight sequence, the first, take, first stage will take the vehicle to a height of around 56 kilometers and will impart a velocity of around 2.4 kilometers meter per second. And the separation Mark, of the first three stage and counting. will take place at 110 seconds. So we are in the final uh, two minutes for the launch, minus two minutes, 49 seconds. So the page of the automatic launch sequence as it is checking out the various health parameters is looking all green. So minus uh, 2 minutes 30 seconds. Charging of PST accumulator started. So countdown at uh, minus two minutes now. Mark minus two minutes and counting. Phase two charging completed. So another one minute fifty seconds to go before we have the ignition of the solid core stage and four solid strap on motors. So minus one minutes thirty seconds. So minus one minutes uh, eighteen seconds. We are very close to less than a minute for the launch now. As I mentioned to you, the lift off is at uh, Start for 19 the time hours, mark. which is 7 o'clock, with a... Mark minus 1 minute. So we are less than a minute now. We have a total launch window of around 10 minutes. Minus 55 seconds. All stops are on. Minus 50 seconds. All sequences are on. So minus 50 seconds. Minus 45 seconds. Minus 40 seconds. PS2 so minus 40 seconds for launch. Open. Minus 35 seconds. Minus 30 seconds. So we are in the last 30 PS1 seconds. PS1 ignition key lock enabled. Real time programs activated. Minus 25 seconds. PS2 VSPPs are opened. So minus, minus 20, 20 seconds. seconds. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, so plus six, plus seven, plus eight, plus nine, plus ten seconds. PSL will lift off normal with the ignition of the solid core booster and the four solid strap ons. Plus 20 seconds. So 20 seconds. Plus stage performance normal.
So at 70 seconds you will have the, the separation of the ground lead saphons where the vehicle altitude would be roughly around 24 kilometers. Plus one minute. So we are already 60 seconds. The performance of the first stage, Blue yes, ground lead saphon has been successfully separated at 70 seconds. The next important event will be the the separation of the air lift step on at 92 seconds. The performance of the first stage has been normal. Air lift step on separated. Air lift step on has been successfully separated at 92 seconds. And as far as the altitude of the vehicle is concerned, it's an altitude of around 51 kilometers and the velocity is around 2.01 km per second. The first stage of the rocket has been successfully separated at 109 seconds, seconds and the second ignited. stage has been successfully ignited at 109 seconds. Plus two minutes. So just waiting for the announcement from the range operation director for the nominal performance of the second stage. Second stage performance normal. Yes, second stage performance is normal. And uh, the, during the second stage of flight, the closed loop guidance has been, uh, algorithm has been initiated. Uh, right now we are at 145 seconds. Exactly at the 203 seconds when the vehicle reaches an altitude of 115 kilometers, you will have the announcement for separation of the payload fairing. The so time is at 160 seconds, velocity 2.0. Second stage performance normal. 6 km per second and uh, the range the vehicle has travelled is around 205 kilometers now. So second stage uh, performance is uh, normal. Just like we have said, the PSL is the first one, the first one, the second stage is the first one. And where the performance of the first stage and second stage is concerned, it has been nominal performance so 195 seconds into the flight altitude of around 115 kilometers very close to the announcement for the payload fairing separation as for the nominal timing at 203 seconds we should have the separation of the payload fairing Time is uh, 224 seconds. Second stage performance normal. Second stage performance is normal. What they taking the vehicle in Minato? Plus four minutes. So 240 seconds into the flight, the velocity is around 4.33 km per second. Altitude is 131 kilometers. The Second stage cutoff is expected at 260 seconds when the vehicle would have been at an altitude of 134 kilometers. Second stage engine shut off. Second stage Third has stage been successfully ignited. separated at 263 seconds and uh, the third stage has been ignited at 264 seconds. So velocity of the third vehicle. Third stage performance normal. The third stage performance is uh, normal the velocity is around 5 kilometers and the vehicle has uh, crossed a range of almost uh, 658 kilometers the second st the third stage of the rocket which is a ps3 stage will burn for uh, nearly 120 seconds after it's burn out the Plus the vehicle will minutes. continue to progress third further stage performance normal before the fourth stage gets ignited after 230 seconds. So there will be a coasting time of around uh, 230 seconds between the third stage burnout and the fourth stage. So we just heard the announcement the PS3 performance is normal.
so at uh, 329 seconds third stage performance normal third stage performance has been declared as uh, nominal so 348 seconds as per the nominal timing the ps3 burnout should happen at 385 seconds the vehicle is at an altitude of around 100 and third stage performance normal so third stage performance normal the vehicle is at an altitude of around 138.5 kilometers another 15 seconds to go before we hear the announcement for the third stage action completed vehicle in coasting phase so third stage burnout and the vehicle is uh, burnt out and the vehicle is going through the coasting phase right now and uh, as far as the ignition of the four stage is concerned it should happen at 616 seconds the time right now is uh, 400 seconds and the velocity is around 7 km an altitude of around 142 km so right now the vehicle is going through the coasting phase vehicle of activity coasting normal so found it another 200 seconds before we Plus have minutes. the ignition of the four stage the view of the the, the ground trace where what they checking in main auto the mission control center here the time versus altitude plot and the velocity plot that is depicted on the screen this is the ground train ground trace that is shown where we have a very close uh, match of the pre flight prediction of the ground trace versus the in the the flight conditions and as far as the time versus altitude is concerned as far as the time versus altitude is concerned a very close match with respect to the the performance of the pre flight so we are going through the coasting phase between the third and fourth stage plus 8 minutes vehicle in coasting phase vehicle is uh, presently going through the coasting phase 490 seconds and the as per the planned timing the ps4 ignition should happen at 617 seconds when the vehicle would have reached an altitude of around 187 as far as the ps4 uh, region is concerned the ps4 burning is for nearly 500 plus seconds and after the ps4 ignition you will have the burnout of ps4 stage at around 1128 seconds ps4 engine has been uh, ignited Plus nine minutes at 530.4 seconds. PS4 engine started. PS4 engine ignition has been uh, ignited. The time right now is 575 seconds, and the vehicle has reached a velocity of around 7.15 km per second. The range of around 2,600 km. The altitude is around 152 km, and the range is nearly 2,670 km.
so 625 seconds into the flight the velocity is around 7.2 the vehicle has attained an altitude of 155 kilometers now we just awaiting the announcement from the range operation director to confirm of the performance on the the fourth stage So almost 200 seconds into the flight of the PS4 stage, so 694 seconds. The altitude is uh, steadily rising, 263 kilometers, and the velocity is 7.44 kilometer per second. As far as the PS4 burnout is concerned, uh, to reach an orbit of around 284 kilometer perigee and 20,600 kilometer apogee, we would require a velocity of nearly 9.6 kilometer per second. So uh, right now we are at 7.5 km per second velocity and uh, time is 727 seconds. So we are into the fourth stage flight. Velocity has uh, reached around uh, 7.6 kilometer. The view of the range operation director. So there has been a variation in the performance from the pre-flight prediction as of now. But for the final performance, we'll await the announcement from the range operation director. But if you look at the display plot of the time versus altitude and the velocity, we have the time instant of almost uh, 800 seconds that has been reached. And the velocity is 7.7 .7 km per second. So right now the vehicle has uh, attained an uh, orbital velocity where uh, we have a Perigee of around 130 and apogee of around 1900 right now. Time is uh, 834 seconds, 7.8 kilometer per second. Another uh, 2 kilometer per second velocity is expected in the next 200 300 seconds burning of uh, PS4 stage. So view of the ground trace and as you can see on your screen uh, the time at 863 we have the perigee of 140 kilometer that is attained and an apogee of around 2600 kilometers. The velocity that will be required to reach the final destined orbit will be 9.7 kilometer per second. So nearly nine, 15 minutes. 900 seconds. Velocity of uh, just 8 km per second right now. And altitude is around 232 kilometers. As far as the nominal altitude at the PS4 cutoff is concerned, the it should be around uh, 200 and uh, 455 kilometers.
and the time at that instant will be 1128 seconds. So another 200 seconds before we have the PS4 burnout. I'm waiting for the final clearance from the range operation director in terms of the performance and the remaining time. So 980 seconds. As far as the perigee and apogee is concerned, they are uh, lower than the, the predefined number at this instant of time. So almost a thousand seconds into the flight right now. Thousand twenty five seconds, the velocity is around eight point three kilometer per second. We are going on to tracking the vehicle in Minato. So second stage. Just awaiting the confirmation from the range operation director. So PS4 shutoff command has been issued at 1039 seconds and as per the display screen on the flight events, INS's 1H satellite separation command has been issued as 1076 seconds. So we are waiting for the announcement from the range operation director. As you can see on your screen, the perigee and apogee is around 167 by 6,554 kilometers. The time as is shown on your screen is 1185 seconds. So we'll come back to you once we have the, the formal announcement from the range operation director.
So, Chairman is on your screen. Just waiting for the announcement from the range operation director here at this juncture. This is the range operations director. During the flight, heat shield has not separated. Further analysis will be carried out subsequently. So we just heard the announcement from the range operation director that during the, as the heat shield has not been separated, uh, further analysis will be carried out at a later point of time. So we take you back to the mission control center.